Hello chemistry students, I wanted to record a quick tutorial on how to draw the phosphate ion Lewis structure. The phosphate ion has a formula of PO4 with a 3 minus charge. So as with all Lewis structures, the first thing we need to do is figure out the number of electrons we're working with um, by looking at the periodic table position of the elements. So phosphorus being in column 5A is going to contribute 5 valence electrons to the structure. Oxygen is one column over. Each oxygen contributes six valence electrons. And there are four of them in the molecule. So that is a total of 24 valence electrons. The minus three charge indicates that the molecule has an additional three electrons in the structure. So altogether we have 5 plus 24 is 29 valence electrons plus 3. We have 32 valence electrons that we should include in the Lewis structure. Alright, so next I'm going to put my central atom in the middle and my oxygen atoms Uh, arranged around the central atom and my suggestion is always to start with single bonds so I'm going to represent that as two electrons between the central phosphorus and each oxygen atom so that will use up two four six eight valence electrons I need to use 24 sorry I need to use 32 total so as I count them out and um, arrange them symmetrically, I've used up 8. I'm going to go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and that's all of my electrons. Um, in introductory chemistry, we usually say if the octet rule is followed by each of your elements, or the duet rule for hydrogen, you have a valid structure. And at this point, if we analyze each atom, that oxygen has access to eight electrons, six non-bonding and two bonding. Likewise for the other oxygen. And the central phosphorus, they are all bonding electrons. And so it has access to two, four, six, eight electrons. So that would indicate a structure including single bonded oxygen atoms. So if I were to go ahead and finish my structure here on the right, I would put phosphorus in the middle, single bonds representing two shared electrons, and each oxygen has six non-bonding electrons. We would bracket the entire molecule and indicate that it has a negative 3 charge. Okay, So that is a valid uh, Lewis structure. It turns out that it is not the most favorable Lewis structure. Even though the octet rule is followed by each atom in the structure, um, we do need to do a formal charge analysis to actually indicate what might be a more favorable charge. Ideally, your formal charges on most of the atoms are zero. Um, in a polyatomic ion like this, that's not going to be possible. Uh, but let's do that quick analysis. So it might be helpful here to replace, again, those single bonds with two shared electrons for this analysis. So the way I think about formal charge is I think about how much ownership does each atom have over the electrons. It owns the non-bonding electrons completely, 
and for this analysis we assume that half of the bonding electrons um, are owned by a given atom. So this oxygen up here, if I circle kind of the electrons it owns, would be two, four, six, seven electrons. Okay. Now, oxygen in its uh, a neutral atom, lone atom of oxygen would have six valence electrons. And this indicates that it has, again, I call it ownership, it has seven electrons. So it would, in fact, be carrying a minus one formal charge. And I can just write that as a minus sign. That's going to be true of the other oxygen as well. And then if we look at the central phosphorus, it has ownership, if you want to think about it that way, over four electrons. But a neutral atom of phosphorus would have five valence electrons. So in a sense, it's more positive than it would be if it had all five. So the phosphorus is going to be carrying a plus one formal charge. So we do see that we have total negative four formal charge and a positive one formal charge. That does get us to the negative three charge overall. However, we have a situation where phosphorus can have an expanded octet. It is in the third period of the periodic table. It has an unoccupied 3D sublevel. And so there's a possibility that we can make the formal charges a bit more favorable um, than what we see here. And formal charges, the most favorable set of formal charges would be um, as many atoms as possible with a formal charge of zero. Okay. So it turns out, instead of having single bonded electrons, the more favorable structure in terms of formal charge takes one of those single bonds and turns it into a double bond. So that's going to look like this. Each single bonded oxygen still has six non-bonding electrons. The double bonded oxygen has moved one set of electrons into the bond. So it has four non-bonding electrons and then a double bond. Okay. The whole thing would still have a negative three charge. Okay. Now the oxygen atoms with six non-bonding electrons still carry a minus one formal charge. This oxygen, as you may know, a double bonded oxygen has a formal charge of zero because there are four bonds in the double bond, or sorry, four electrons in the double bond, two of which we assign to this oxygen. So if it has two ownership over two electrons in the bond and six electron or four electrons non-bonding, it has, again, I use the term loosely, ownership over six electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So that gives this oxygen a formal charge of zero. Okay. The phosphorus in the middle, each single bond gives it ownership of a single electron. The double bond gives it ownership of two electrons. So we have two, three, four, five electrons available. Phosphorus, neutral phosphorus has five valence electrons. So in this state, it has a formal charge of zero. We still end up with a negative three charge, but two of the atoms having a formal charge of zero is considered favorable in the Lewis structure. Finally, if I was to complete this fully, I would actually need to draw three additional resonant structures where I would swap out the double bond here, here, and here. And whenever I make a double bond, I would only have two non-bonding electrons. So I'll leave that to you. Um, we would need to show those resonant structures to solve this problem completely.